برامجنا في راديو بلدي كل يوم جمعة من الثامنة وحتى التسعة صباحا مع ليلى الحسيني في بث حي ومباشر وعبر دبليو ان زي كي راديو 690 اي ام صباح الخير بلدي صباح الخير لكل مستمعينا Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248-557-3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> Go ahead, Atif. Good morning. Oh. I am Atif Abdel Jawa. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Good morning. The division of Arab American voters in the election that has just concluded mirrors not only the division within the U.S. society, but also among their own motherlands in the Arab world. Those from the Arab Gulf states, for example, supported Donald Trump, and those pro-Palestinian voters supported Joe Biden, the Democratic nominee, hoping that he would press again for a two-state solution. Another example is this, the Shiite population in the Michigan area believe Trump is good for America, is bad for America, excuse me. They believe he's bad for America because he's bad for Iran and for Syria. While Egyptians at the food stands in New York love, they love Donald Trump because he is siding with Egypt. They believe he is good for America because he's siding with Egypt in its dispute with Ethiopia over the GRE, GRED dam over the river line. So what motivated uh, the Arab American community to support one candidate or the other? Is there a generational difference among the community and are members of the community ready now to run for office? These are some of the questions we are going to handle to discuss in the next hour. We have with us a group of distinguished guests. We have Mr. Ray Hanania from Chicago, journalist. He is an award-winning reporter and the U.S. special correspondent for the Arab News newspaper. And we have from Michigan, Dr. Abdel Majid Katranji, who is a political analyst and a board member of the Emerge Action USA, one of the Muslim American advocacy groups in the U.S. And from Washington, we hope we have with us Mr. Khalid Safouri, who is an international and strategic consultant. He advised members of Congress on issues related to the Middle East. Now I understand that Mr. Safouri will be with us the first half of the show only. So I would like to start with asking all three guests the same question, which is, 
please give us, share with us your own observation on the current uh, election in general, not just about the Arab American community. And let's start with uh, Mr. Uh, Hananiah. Uh, Atif, thanks for uh, inviting me on the program. I, I appreciate it. And uh, uh, I'm happy to help. Uh, just to remind everybody, we're broadcasting live on Facebook at US Arab Radio. Uh, on, so they can watch us. We have a lot of people watching us live, as a matter of fact, uh, which is really good. Um, as far as the election, um, you know, my position has always been that Arabs, I always start from the premise that Arabs, Christian and Muslim, have been abused and mistreated and disrespected in this country um, going back generations. Um, and it hasn't really changed. It's become a fine, subtle art, though, from politicians who use us um, and they play to our emotions. And as an Arab community, we react with our emotions rather than our, uh, really, we don't think sometimes uh, that both these candidates, Bi Biden or Trump, are bad for us in different ways. Um, but I think it's very important that Arabs and Muslims uh, become very engaged in the process um, and uh, run for office, vote, get our opinions out. But the one tendency that continues to come up is we end up hating ourselves. We get mad at our own people more than we get mad at the politicians, you know, who oppress us. So to me, that's a trend that I see too often that as a community, we need to address. We need to be more tolerant of different views. We need to be less emotional. We need to be less personal with each other. Um, we become victims in this political process um, rather than victors. I mean, that that's my opinion. That's how I enter politics, um, and that's how I look at it. And I've covered politics 45 years for the Chicago Sun-Times and now for a bunch of other newspapers. Um, and the media is our biggest enemy. They hate us, they distort us, they demonize us, they marginalize us, and they use us when they think it's to their benefit. Ray, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, want to thank you for pointing out that we are also broadcasting simultaneously on Facebook. If you want to go follow us uh, on video, uh, go to the U.S. Arab Radio page on Facebook. But I will get back to you, Ray, about uh, your statement that we have been abused in this uh, society. But let me uh, first go to Dr. Katranji to ask him the same question, Dr. Katranji, would you share with us your observation on the current election in general? You know, I think focusing on, and good morning to everybody, uh, thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, I echo with Ray, in terms of the larger political picture or the larger uh, strategy as it involves the Arab American community, I think that uh, we have a lot of growth, but focusing on the 2020 election, there's a lot of pride in the sense that the Arab American community, regardless of whether they wanted to vote for Trump or they voted for Biden, it wasn't just a matter of voting and it wasn't just a matter of getting a picture with somebody. Uh, historically, we were about identity politics. We got excited if somebody mentioned us and therefore we felt like that was the person we had to support. This election was dramatically different and, and this is with respect to all the great Arab American leaders from the early 1900s that were involved in politics and that got elected, uh, you know, whether you're talking about Ray LaHood from Peoria, Illinois, or Donna Shalala, uh, who, you know, who's a Republican, uh, or Donna Shalala from, uh, uh, from the East Coast, uh, who represented uh, and worked uh, as a secretary under uh, President Clinton. We did, we, we've always had Arab Americans as part of the American quilt and political landscape, but we never identified as Arab American. Oftentimes we were afraid because we knew of all the labels that come with it. This year in 2020, there was not a problem for people who wanted to support Iran to say that they were about supporting Iran. There wasn't a problem for people who supported Egypt to say they were about supporting Egypt. There wasn't a problem for people to be proud of the background that they had, regardless whether it was Muslim, uh, Christian, uh, you know, from Iraq, from Tunisia, 
there was finally this engagement politically, and it was about issues. From my perspective, that's a source of great pride and great optimism because a record number of Arab Americans have run for office and political office on all levels. And remember, everybody, this is not a national election only. The beauty of America is you can get elected from your state board of education to your local board of education, your local planning boards, all the way to the president of the United States. That requires our involvement on every level all the time. What is still the challenge to overcome is we need to start looking at us as Arab Americans. I understand we're proud to be, you know, my family's from Syria. We have a particular view about the Syrian situation. That's important to us, but it's not important for us as Americans engaged in the political process. The first thing that has to happen is that for me to make sure that my family has a right to visit me in the United States anytime I want, that when my Arab American brothers and sisters apply for loans, they don't face the same biases, uh, that they don't experience the biases that they experience while others can walk into a business or a bank and get the loans that they need. That when there's a political process or a legal process, there isn't this assumptive bias that there's something nefarious by being an Arab American, which is all too common, something that we experience and engage. We call it institutional bias or unintentional bias, because let's face it, how many Arab American heroes can we immediately identify on television or Arab American heroes that we can identify in literature through the American literature or media? And that's where we need to start coming together, growing strong, because again, we're proud to be Arabs, you can be proud to be uh, uh, from Iraq. You can be proud to be from Tunisia. But here, you're my neighbor as an American and as an Arab. Let's focus on what brings us together. So great pride in 2020, but great optimism and hope for what we can do in the future. So um, <clears throat> you're nearly echoing uh, what Ray just said about uh, uh, being abused. Uh, let me turn uh, to uh, Mr. Khal Safuri. Uh, if you are there, Khaled, I can't see your... Uh, no, he's not. Uh, Atif, he's not connected. Um, he's not? He ha yeah, he has not connected. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, let, me, um, uh, let me ask you, Ray. Um, you talked about how much abused the Arab American community is. And, and I want you just to give me specific examples about the abuse. Well, uh, to me, I, because I've been so deep in politics, um, you know, I don't, I'm not at the surface and I agree, but I agree so much with Abdul Majid who has been very active in politics over the years. I've seen his name and I'm familiar with a lot of his work. Um, there, our community, we get dragged into the political fight between the Republicans and the Democrats. And the truth is, instead of being dragged into that fight by taking sides, Arab Americans should pick the candidate that we like, but we should step back and say to ourselves, as Arab Americans, we're one community, whether we're Republican or Democratic, whether we support Biden or whether we support Trump. We should look at our involvement as a victory for us, regardless of who wins. What happens instead is, you know, uh, Biden wins and, you know, suddenly some Arabs are happy, some Arabs are unhappy. We, instead of coming together with the power that we engaged the process with, we use it to fight with ourselves because the community in America excludes us. We're excluded from government. We're excluded from the census. We don't get funding from the government that we deserve. I pay my taxes. I've never seen any money from the state of Illinois come to support Arab Americans the way money goes to other ethnic groups. We're abused. This is probably the first time Biden, and all credit to him, I, I will give this to him. This is the first time a president has acknowledged us so uh, openly the way Biden has with his six point protocol, uh, which I think is phenomenal. But we shouldn't be uh, drunk with uh, excitement. We shouldn't hallucinate and think that, oh, this is going to change. We need to remember the media is our enemy. The mainstream media, they demonize us. They demonize Palestine. They demonize Syria. They demonized Iraq. When we try to make an argument, they'll allow us to come close, but they will never allow us to cross the line and say that Israel's government 
is responsible for war crimes. We, we're excluded from that debate, and the politicians are afraid to confront that. So I think our power as Arabs comes from us not fighting with each other. Whoever wins, I'm telling you, we're the same community. After this election, we should buy pro-Biden Arabs, pro-Trump Arabs, we should come together and say that, like, and I, like Abdul Majid said, we're Arab American. We have interests in this country, but we need to be strong. We need to come together and we need to fight for the real issue, which is the rights of Arab Americans. Okay, gentlemen, when we come back after the break, I'm going to ask you both a follow up question. Uh, for Ray, I'm going to ask him uh, you said that you are not getting any funding from the state of Illinois. And my question is, okay, are we doing enough ourselves to force the state to fund us, to give us money uh, like they do with other ethnic community? And for you, uh, Dr. Katranji, uh, the question is, you talked about an identity question. Uh, okay, but what do you mean by identity question if we are, as Arabs, divided among amongst ourselves, divided into several ethnic and several identities. You know, that, that that's a Syrian, that's an, a, a Shi'i, that's a Sunni, but we'll discuss that after the break. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab offers a great array of your favorite Mediterranean meals. Meals range from lamb specialties, shawarma sandwiches, seafood dinners, and they offer special big trays of your favorite food, plus much more. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab address is 32839 Northwestern Highway in Farmington Hills. Their phone number is 248-538-9552. That number again is 248-538-9552. And the supermarket is open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Kashat's Mediterranean Market and Shish Kebab will definitely leave you satisfied. Read the Arab News newspaper for the latest on the U.S. elections, the battle for president, and breaking news and unique stories on Arabs in America and the world online at arabnews.com. The Arab News newspaper is the leading English language newspaper in the Arab world with editions in France, Pakistan, Japan, Dubai, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and bureaus in London, New York, and Chicago. Join the more than 5 million people who follow the Arab News on Facebook online at arabnews.com. Life is a nonprofit charity that's provided humanitarian aid and development to people and communities for over 25 years, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. When disaster occurs here or around the world, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. Please help improve these efforts. Make your tax-deductible donation to Life now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. When it comes to reproductive medicine, IVF Michigan Fertility Centers are the recognized leaders. With locations in Bloomfield Hills and five other cities in Michigan and Ohio, IVF has experts in all aspects of the field. As a founding member of IVF Michigan Fertility Centers, Dr. Nicholas Shama is one of the leading reproductive <laughs> endocrinologists in Michigan and Ohio. Dr. Shama has performed over 10,000 IVF cases and has helped thousands of couples fulfill their dreams of parenthood. American board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and reproductive endocrinology and infertility, Dr. Nicholas Shama is a very caring, compassionate, expert physician that understands not only the medical but also the emotional toil of infertility on his patients. When it's time, get personalized care from Dr. Nicholas Shama at IVF Michigan Fertility Centers in Michigan and Ohio. Call toll-free 855-952-9600, 855-952-9600. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 
700 a.m. Welcome back to uh, Radio Baladi. We are discussing the U.S. Uh, presidential election and the Arab American community. And I would like to ask uh, Mr. Ray Hanania if we as a community are doing enough to, for example, force or persuade the state of Illinois to give us funding. He says it gives the funding to other ethnic groups, but not the Arab uh, American community. Uh, go ahead, uh, Mr. Hanania. Um, we're not doing enough. And, and when I say we're not doing enough, it's because we're divided. Uh, we don't act, we really need to make a concerted effort to come together, uh, to work together, regardless of our political views. You know, we live in the United States, and yet we mentally, we're still back home in Palestine. Uh, people look at me and they say, Ray, uh, you're in, an independent Palestinian uh, and, or you're a Fatah Palestinian or you're a Jebha Palestinian. You know, we bring these old experiences where dictators tell us what to do and we live like we're still under the rule of dictators in the United States. And freedom isn't that uh, comfortable for us because we've come from areas where we've been oppressed. It's part of our culture and our lifestyle, the way we've been treated. So instead of focusing on the real problem, we tend to look at ourselves and we fight with each other. And really that needs to stop. This election is a very good example of half the Arabs. And you know, when you look at the polling, 60% of the Arabs supported Biden um, and maybe 36% of the Arabs supported Trump. Um, the pro-Biden people were yelling at the pro-Trump people. What's the point of us yelling at each other when both of them, you know, we could find reasons why we don't like Trump. He moved the embassy. He, uh, you know, cut these deals with the UAE and uh, Bahrain and Sudan uh, to, just so Sudan could get off the terrorism watch list. Um, we could be upset with those. But we shouldn't be upset with the people who are engaged in the process. Absolutely. We should sit with ourselves. We should talk about these things and find ways, even as somebody uh, who supports one side or the other, how do we move? What do we do after this election? How do we come together? That should be our focus, I think. Dr. Katranji, why are we divided? I think Ray put it succinctly. I think that for some reason we carry over divisions that are unnecessary to carry over. For instance, even if this is a basic argument, let's say I disagreed with you on the on the price of a falafel sandwich. You know, invariably you, you hear this and it's it's so sad. Oh, uh, you know, the, the, the food of a southern Syrian the food of a southern Syrian versus a northern Lebanese, you know, you'll, you'll, so you'll see is better. And, 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 and you'll hear these these, these ridiculous positions. The point of the matter is, I would disagree with that sandwich, whether you know whether I was at Subway or whether I was at the, I mean, why are we throwing these things? We certainly don't tell a guy at Subway that I'm not happy with the sandwich because they might be Italian American. It sounds ridiculous. But for some reason that when it comes to our engagement, we're very quick. And I do think this is something conditioned into us by generational uh, frustrations that haven't been able to express the true root or cause of our uh, uh, of, of, of the challenges our community faces. The beauty of America is it is an opportunity for reset. And we see this, especially with this coming generation. And, and I love what Ray says, is that this coming generation is politically involved, politically engaged, but politically open. And that's the thing we must reinforce and maintain. I don't care if you've supported Trump. I don't care if you supported Biden. What I personally did, you know, people know, but for the purpose of this conversation, it's about all of us. If I have a connection with somebody in government, I, for somebody I supported, I must maintain those doors for our community as an Arab American to everybody, for the ones who agree with me and the ones who disagree with me. Because if we're both strong in the United States together, we can come to a better understanding for the future wherever we go. 
Arab Americans have been conditioned on something called an all or nothing concept. And that's where our identity politics sometimes gets in our way. We have been taught that there's a accepted set of ideals as an Arab American that we cannot compromise about. Now I can celebrate being Arab. I can celebrate loving Falafi, okay? But I don't have to necessarily celebrate the, the local politic of one person to another person 6,000 miles away because frankly, nothing they do affects me directly right now. But what does affect me is what's taught in our schools. What does affect me is my ability to get a visa into this country. What does affect, or uh, as an American citizen, I don't know, but for other, you know, uh, other Arab Americans that, or, or people who want to be, who are Arabs who want to become American, what does affect me is getting loans as an Arab American. And what also affects me is what my children see on television as we're continually portrayed as some backwater culture that has nothing to contribute to the world, where I agree with Ray that very often media outlets, you know, use us as some form of default evil on a global level. We're always that secret uh, uh, James Bond villain, right? That, 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 that always suddenly emerges. As a matter of fact, when I go to a movie, that's what I'm waiting for. Like, am I, is, is it going to be an Arab, right? How many of us watch the news today and hear about a tragedy? And the first reaction is, oh my God, I feel so sorry for those people. And the follow-up reaction is, God, don't let it be an Arab American. You know, this is, this is, this is, you know, this is what brings it with this, that we need to overcome this. The only way to overcome this is we need to let the Middle East go. That doesn't mean we don't care about the Middle East, but what we need to do is we can serve the Middle East best by being strong here in the United States, and we can only be strong together. Ray, I know you touched on this uh, in the passing, but uh, how did the Arab American community vote in this current election? Well, I mean, I think that uh, the Arabs, I mean, according to polling that I've seen, and there have been several polls that have been out there, um, I'd say about two-thirds of the Arabs supported Biden and one-third supported uh, Trump, and it tended to reflect religion. So, for example, if you were, and not just religion, but how conservative, how liberal you were, if you were very conservative Christian, you tended to support Trump. If you were very conservative Muslim, um, you tended to support Trump. And the reason for that wasn't because of Trump, but because the Republican Party being conservative really kind of touches a, uh, a, a mainstream chord in, in, in Arab culture. We're basically conservative. We don't support abortion. We, we support uh, religion in schools. We're big defenders of religion, Christian or Muslim. Um, there are things that the Republican Party touches in us that are hard to break away from. Um, we oppose, uh, you know, more the sexual liberation. Like, you know, we're not against gay rights. Uh, we're not against civil rights. Uh, but at the same time, it's not something that we embrace as, as a culture. Um, so these are things that are inherent in us. So it's easy to see when you look at it that we're not a monolithic bl block. We each have different, uh, you know, reasons. But again, I go back to my premise that, you know, we can be that way. It's okay to be that way. It's okay to vote for Trump. It's okay to vote for Biden. Um, but once we're done, we really need to then continue the political independent process that we've engaged in. And how do we make that work for us? It doesn't matter whether they declare Biden or Trump the winner tomorrow. What matters is how do we use that to make our community stronger? And too often, uh, our community are, is often led by leaders, you know, who are think that their model of leadership is the tyranny that they left in the Middle East. So they act like tyrants and dictators. Um, and if you don't agree with them, they isolate you and they attack you. So we need to, re and it, it, I don't know if this is uh, you know, clear enough, we really need to do a better job of how we come together as a community. We, I should, whether, uh, whether um, Abdul Majid likes Trump or Biden should be irrelevant to me. He's sure. Arab American. I should support him 100%. I should be able to talk with him about differences and not worry about we shouldn't worry about who we voted for or what all our views are. 
I mean, obviously, short of violence. You know, I and I agree with you. You know, when I was younger, I would go to the movies all the time, Abdul Majid, and I would watch the movie and I would see my relatives in the role of terrorism. I would see my uncles and cousins right. in the faces of the terrorists, and it and it was a hurtful thing. Everybody else enjoyed it, and in other movies like uh, Titanic, I would watch how they would ignore us. You know, we get one word in the movie, yalla, but it turns out that Arabs were a major part of the Titanic. We had yes. parties on it, and 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 I think Atif made a good point. Whose fault is that? In part, it is our fault. We've made it easy for the media to stomp us. We've made it easy for politicians to exclude us. We have to stop making it easy for people to marginalize us. Dr. Katranji, uh, when we come back uh, after the break, I'm going to ask you, uh, as you just heard, Ray uh, is saying that uh, the, the community voted along religious lines, uh, at least in this current election. But my question for you is, uh, generally, uh, does the community vote along party lines? When we come back. Ziad brand quality products from our family to yours Ziad brothers importing offers the finest quality products including brands like sultan craft nestle hook rico picon donna and many more ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best for more information visit our website at www.ziad.com that's www.ziad.com Ziad quality products from our family to yours. Water covers 71% of the world and the Arab News newspaper covers the rest with breaking news from across the Arab and Muslim world and the latest on Arabs in America. Get inside the headlines with expert analysis and insight at arabnews.com. Join 5 million Facebook fans who stay in touch with the Arab News, the Arab world's leading English language newspaper, online at arabnews.com. Are you going to start a restaurant or a grocery store soon? Do you need floor plans and designs? Call Naji Aboud at 734-744-9796. Do you want to buy kitchen and restaurant equipment at discount prices? Call Naji Aboud now, 734-744-9796. New concept products and design, the trademark of kitchen equipment. 5% discount on all purchases of $75,000 or more. New concept products and design, new location, 31185 Schoolcraft in Livonia. Learn more at www.newconceptproducts.com. Call Najee Aboud, 734-744-9796. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bottom serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all CDC guidelines and is open every day, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. I am Atif Abdel Jawad. Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on Radio Baladi. We are talking about the presidential election in the U.S. and 
the Arab American community. Uh, Dr. Katranji, as I mentioned before the break, does the community vote along party lines? Yes, I, I think there, there's definitely a, a party, uh, uh, I don't want to say divide, right? A party affiliation in our community, and it's, it fluxes. Uh, you'll find a mom and a dad vote for one candidate and the son and daughter-in-law vote for another candidate. So th there isn't what I would call what a hard line. I think Ray outlines it. It's, it's sometimes it's whatever value you hold the most or dearest to you. And then you tend to, you tend to follow that line. And, and that's, that, uh, that's actually excellent. That's what America is about. That's the right to vote. It, you know, the, the, the last thing we want is somebody sitting behind our shoulder telling us how to vote. So uh, I think the, the way Ray put it is whether you voted for Trump, whether you voted for Biden, you know, that's your right. And that's your, that should be, uh, right? It, it should be celebrated it, it, holy amongst us. Uh, and just because I voted for Trump or I voted for Biden doesn't suddenly mean I don't like Atif Jawad or Ray Hania. I think what becomes really important is, is that I voted for this person. Now, next week, see, this is the big, this is where the Arab American community are, are falls to their identity politics sometimes. We're used to voting and not being involved anymore. And what they have to understand is you voted today, tomorrow you have to put the person you voted for to task. You have six points that I liked, you know, from uh, Joe Biden. That means every day, every week, the Arab American news, the uh, M Gage USA, uh, the uh, whatever, uh, USCMO, the Chaldean community, every day they have to put that candidate to task. That you had six points about us as Arab Americans. What what are we? And I know the Chaldean community doesn't always identify as part of the Arab American, but a lot of times they just, they're lumped with us. So just to be fair to any of our viewers that may have objected to that and out. But my point is, is great. And if our tent is bigger, that's even better. You know, I would love to have Chaldeans celebrate and say, hey, look, you know what? We're Arab too. Uh, uh, I, I would love to have the Sudanese community come in because a lot of times we see them as the African side. But let's face it, they're Arabs. They speak Arabic. So let's make our tent bigger and celebrate that bigger tent. Now, Sudan made a deal with Israel. Can we be upset with that? Absolutely. But does that mean I'll never work with another Sudanese in the United States again? No, that's ridiculous. Because that deal, as much as it pains us or as much as we may have been frustrated with it, has no effect to us as a community right here to grow, evolve, and develop. So what we what we need to do is start stop labeling that you're voting because you're religious. You're voting because when you vote in the privacy of that booth, that's your private matter. That's between you and that paper and God, if you believe in God. I believe in God, but I just don't want to inflict my views on anybody. Uh, but what I do what I do know is that when I'm an Arab American and I signed that label and I filled out that that ballot sheet. The next day, my responsibility is to go to that candidate and say, congratulations, we helped you get elected. And that's where I'm very proud of several of the Arab American organizations and Muslim American organizations that are American based. They did a great job rallying and mobilizing people to vote. Let's face it. This was the largest number of voter turnout in American history. OK, and in no small part was because the Arab American community got very involved in Michigan. We do have one of the most diverse Arab American communities imaginable. But I was very proud to see that there was a general trend to support the Arab American uh, candidate, regardless of religion, religiosity, political background, orientation, uh, thing, because in general, it was better to say, I would rather have a Atif uh, that I can talk to or a, 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 a Mariat that I can talk to. Uh, and, 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 and someone who knows me, who grew up with me, who shared a, a meal with me so that they could represent me. And you watch, like, for instance, in the, in the state house of election for Michigan, Abdullah Hamoud, who's an Arab American first, proud to serve in our state house. He has a background. He's Lebanese. He's Shiite. He's proud of those backgrounds, but he was always for the Arab American community first. Helped get Abraham, uh, and forgive me, Ibrahim, that I forgot the le your last name right now, get elected to the state house in, 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 uh, in, in Hamtramck. He happens to be Arab American as well, but he's also Yemeni. He's also Sunni. But it didn't matter. Those things don't matter in terms of what it means for us as a community. Those guys helped each other out to get elected, to raise funds. 
Brian Musalam is another great example of a, of a, uh, of a uh, MSU Board of Trustee who worked, for, that's a statewide election process in our state. We're very proud of him. And, and, and he actively got people uh, involved in, in, in the system. It didn't matter their background. What mattered was you're an Arab American, you're about making America better. And while making America better, you're giving opportunity for the Amer Arab American. And that's what we have to, that's how we have to start approaching our politics. So to everybody who voted, this was a great election from that perspective. But your responsibility today is that when you meet your candidate, you may push your view, but don't denounce the other person who has the opposite view. I may advocate for something over there, but over here, I have to advocate for all of us. So really important, don't block meetings. Don't uh, uh, what they call condition the candidate to feel one way or another about the next group they're going to meet. Because believe it or not, if you do it that way, somebody else that you don't expect is going to do the same thing to you. It, it, quite the contrary. People love positivity. People love people being about something. So I'm a devout Sunni Muslim. Great. I got to make sure that every Shia Muslim has the same opportunity. Every Christian has the same opportunity here in the United States that I have. Every atheist has the same opportunity in the United States that I have. My personal belief, my personal matrix doesn't define the entirety of me when it comes to what, how, what I can do with Ray, what I can do with you, Atif, or with the entire community watching us. Our goal here is that I can be safe to celebrate who I am as long as I work hard to make you safe to be who you are, even if who you are is against my personal opinion. That's not what counts. What counts is that you and I sit together and advance our community so that we're part of this quilt. And remember, Arab Americans have been in the United States for hundreds of years. We have been part of this country for hundreds of years. It's time to recognize that we are Americans who happen to be Arab and we have a culture and a community to celebrate, not by looking overseas, and we're proud of overseas, but by looking here in the United States itself to see what we've done to make this country great. Ray, I know that uh, Abdul Majid uh, touched on this issue, but I want you both to answer uh, this question um, in terms of both Illinois and Michigan. And my question is, how much of an impact does the Arab American community have on the election in your own state? Illinois, we'll start with Ray. Well, Illinois is... Uh predominantly Democratic state, um, so there's no way a Republican is going to win any of the big offices. Um, it's so Democratic, and you know the way our process is, we, we don't uh, elect presidents based on popular vote, we elect them based on uh, the electoral vote, the number of delegates that a state has. So our vote in Illinois went up significantly but it didn't really benefit Biden, for example, and, and Illinois was very democratic and very supportive of Biden. But where we did have an impact as Arab Americans was in the third congressional district in Illinois, uh, which was held by a conservative uh, Democrat for many years, uh, Dan Lipinski. Um, we did elect a progressive woman uh, who did, Marie Newman, who recognized the need to involve Arab Americans where her, where the predecessor, the incumbent, Dan Lipinski, uh, pretty much ignored the Arab Americans in the third district. And the third district is the largest Palestinian concentrated congressional district in the United States. It's the eighth largest Arab concentrated congressional district according to the New York Times. So of congressional districts, the third district has the eighth largest Arab American voter population and the largest Palestinian American population. So we were able to get together to support uh, the election of Marie Newman. And now as, uh, you know, as uh, Abdul Majid points out, we now need to, we can't go to sleep and walk away. We need to make sure she follows up that she appoints Arab Americans to office, that she recognizes Arab Americans. Illinois, we, we got the, the uh, legislature to make it a law that April is Arab American Heritage Month, not a resolution, it's a law in Illinois. Every state should be able to go there and force their legislature to say, you know what, you do this for everybody else, you need to do it for us. So there are things we can demand that they support 
Um, and it's things like that that we can do. We need more programs. We need more appointments. You know, we don't have to all be the presidents. We can work behind the scenes Absolutely. in government, you know, to get things done. So, you know, it'll depend on where this goes after this. But honestly, I know my community. I'm, you know, I'm in my 60s. I've been doing this for 45 years. I have to say there's some ups, but there are a lot of downs being Arab American in this country. Um, I know that after this is over, the Arabs who supported Biden are going to dump all over the Arabs who they didn't think supported Biden the way they did. Um, I, I'm excluded from, uh, you know, the conventions and the conferences now because they think I'm too conservative uh, because I believe Trump was a better choice than Hillary Clinton uh, back in 2016. So they'll never invite, you know, American Muslims for Palestine, CARE, uh, you know, all those groups, they won't invite me to speak. And I don't mind it, but it's their loss because I've been in journalism 45 years and I can help them, but they would rather lose that help and have control of the message and the discussion than be open and bring everybody together in our community. Dr. Gatranji, what about the state of Michigan? Well, the state of Michigan uh, has, has always celebrated a very proud Arab American community uh, uh, for uh, well over a century from the days that Henry Ford uh, engaged uh, Syrian, uh, uh, Lebanese, Palestinian, uh, and Jordanian villages and, 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 and almost invited them en masse to come to Michigan and settle uh, in, uh, in, in the southeast uh, Michigan area, in the metropolitan Detroit area. So, you know, we, we know we made a difference. And I think that uh, in the 2016 election, uh, the lack of uh, excitement, I think, around Hillary Clinton, in large part from lack of engagement from Hillary Clinton to the Arab American community, and a successful engagement of the Arab American community by Trump. I mean, let's, let's, let's face So that mobilized that group to vote for him, uh, whereas the group that would have voted for Clinton did not, and the difference in the vote in, in Michigan was 10,600. Um, had those Arab Americans voted for Clinton, Michigan would have changed, potentially the same excitement if we looked at Wisconsin, which also has a proud Arab American community, and Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, these are these are razor thin margins. People don't think their vote don't count. It absolutely does count. They're counting single votes right now because uh, Georgia may come down to a couple of hundred votes as a difference. So I encourage my Arab American brothers and sisters that are watching to please get involved, to please register. But we know that this year in Michigan, we made a huge difference in the outcome uh, of the presidency. Uh, it was recognized actually immediately by the Biden campaign in Michigan. Uh, I think it, it brought together a lot of the forces that voted for Trump in 2016. And for Clinton, this time they were more unified, not because, but, but there was kind of a more defined message, right? We had a particular set of goals we wanted to see achieved as Arab Americans. And we were optimistic that we see that more with Biden than with Trump. By the way, I was torn. Do I vote Biden? Do I vote Trump? Do I vote? I mean, there's pluses and minuses because remember, he has a foreign policy. I'm absolutely opposed to the Muslim ban. But let's face it, I'm a fiscal conservative. So I kind of like, you know, so... And even the Democratic Party is not a single tent like people think, right? You've got the blue dog conservatives. I would be categorized as those. You have the progressive left, right? The Sanders Democrats. So people need to stop also thinking that, okay, uh, he, Democrat means one thing. Democrat means a lot of things, just like Arab means a lot of things. Republican is the exact same thing. You've got your moderate uh, Republicans. You have your, you, you have your neoconservatives. Again, that's great. That's why America is successful. Because all opinions have a place and all opinions have a voice and all opinions can influence policy. That's what makes it healthy. If one side won versus the other and it was like that for 100 years, this would not be America. This would be a tyrannical society. And so it's really important that we celebrate our differences, collaborate to make this country better and stronger and work to ad address the issues and the grievances as well as make opportunities for us as Arab Americans. Uh, that's where I think you can now see that in Michigan with the outcome. I think Georgia, Atlanta, people are not discussing the Arab American vote, but Georgia has a, Atlanta has a huge Arab American population. And that's where I think a lot of the votes that suddenly showed up that didn't show up in 2016. Uh, even in Texas with some of the shifts that are occurring, not just 
as Democrat versus Republican, but within the Republican Party and within the Democrat Party, you saw a tremendous change in Texas as it's gravitating toward what I call the center of both areas. And in large part, who's in the center? The Arab American community. We tend to be a very uh, 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 politically uh, opportunistic, so maybe slightly left, but socially conservative community. So we fit right in that beautiful middle that, uh, that everybody wants to make sure we have our vote. But now that we sit in the middle, we got to make sure that they don't pull us that way. We pull it on toward us. And that's really what's important. We'll continue after the break. You're looking for the best in optical care. Dr. Iman Nakash is your doctor to see. With years of experience and thousands of successful procedures performed, you can trust your eyes to Dr. Iman Nakash. See Dr. Iman Nakash and his professional staff for your eye care needs. There's two locations to serve you. In Hazel Park, call 248-336-3937. 248-336-3937. In Rochester Hills, call 248-299-3937. That's 248-299-3937. الأكل الشامي الأصيل فقط بدماس كوزين زروهم على 28841 أرشد لك بفارمينغتون هيلز ولطلباتكم اتصلوا على 248-987-4609 That's 248-987-4609 دماس كوزين and catering جبنالكن الشام لعندكن at Top Rehab Physical Therapy Clinic in Dearborn, we provide effective physical therapy sessions in order to limit pain and discomfort. Top Rehab provides physical therapy care for any diagnosis prescribed by a physician, and we regularly see and treat conditions such as stroke, TMJ, fibromyalgia, sciatica, joint pain, and more. We use a variety of pain management methods, including modalities, soft tissue mobilization, and therapeutic exercise. If you're in need of physical rehabilitation or physical therapy get the highest quality health care at top rehab most insurance is accepted and we're open monday wednesday and friday eight to six tuesday and thursday eight to five and saturday ten till two call for an appointment today at 313-846-0555 that's 313-846-0555 choose top rehab physical therapy clinic on michigan avenue in dearborn life's too short to be in pain Join me the first Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. I will be discussing some of the most important issues and events in the Middle East live on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNZK 690 AM and WDMV 700 AM. Welcome back to our discussion on Radio Valadi. We are discussing the U.S. election, presidential election, and the role of the Arab American community. Uh, Ray, uh, you talked about uh, the, the community in uh, pessimistic terms. And um, is, is part of the reason uh, that uh, most of the community is still first generation, like they still carry their baggage, and whether or not you think that the first and second, third generations think and act differently? I, I think it has more to do with uh, the fact that we're pushed out of society. So we turn to our roots and we embrace what we had. Um, so I'm first generation, but there are many second, third generation Arabs who are much more, uh, you know, uh, conservative in thought than I am. 
um, who are much more, uh, you know, uh, tied to the homeland than they are here in the U.S. Uh, I just want to say something about uh, Abdul Majid Katranji. Uh, he's a great voice, and I've heard of, of him, and I've read some of his stuff, and I think one of the things that helps us is being in the news media like this. We don't have shows like this so that we can have discussions like this, so that we can talk about things, so that audiences in our community can hear us. And, you know, we could have two people that don't agree. I think I, I've always looked toward Dearborn as the uh, Plymouth Rock of the Arab American community in this country. Um, they've done such a great job. They got the large numbers in the population. Uh, it's not something we have in Chicago. So we need to break from the Middle East. We have to stop being directed by what happens in the Middle East and start thinking for ourselves in this country. And we need to come together and stop fighting with each other. And, you know, stop looking. We say we don't distinguish between Muslims, Christians, Palestinians, Syrians, Jordanians, whatever. But the truth is we really do deep down. We need to stop it in reality. We need to stop looking at each other like we're something else. I agree with Abdul um, Majid that we're Arab American. That's where we start. That's where we belong. Abdul Majid, um, unless you have something to add to what uh, Ray has just said. Uh, now we have in the US Congress two Arab American women as members of Congress. Uh, Ilhan Omar and uh, Rashida Tlaib. Uh, do you expect to, to see more Arab Americans in the U.S. Congress? Absolutely. I mean, look, we have, well, let's not forget, you also have uh, Rayla, uh, uh, Rayla Hood's son, I'm trying to remember his name, uh, in, 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 uh, in Illinois. Uh, so uh, we had uh, Omar Bustani for a while in, in Congress. So we, uh, Daryl Isa from uh, Southern California, uh, he's never been shy about saying that he's proud to be an Arab American, by the way. He will tell you he was one of the first who was banned from being on a congressperson, banned from being on a plane. Uh, and by the way, I mean, look, and we do have heroes like, uh, you know, Ray Hania, by the way, he's been, he's not kidding. I've read his articles growing up. You know, uh, it was it was a source of pride to be able to open up a newspaper and see the word Hania and know that this is somebody that at least can speak to me. You know, it, 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 it was it was it was journalism. It wasn't just it, it, there's a difference between media and journalism. Uh, this was journalism in action. And these, this was fact that helps that helps evolve who I am as a second generation Arab American. So uh, really important to recognize that we will have more people run for office. Michigan has a record number of Arab Americans. Some of them are sheriffs. Some of them are judges. Some of them are in the House of Representatives. There are men. There are women. They are Christian. They are Muslim. There are whatever, whatever label you want to put. But ultimately, they always came to us as part of the Arab American community. And that's what we celebrate. That's what we're happy about. That's what we're proud about. And I expect to see this model repeated everywhere. We see it in California. We see it in Illinois. We see it in Texas. We're seeing it in Ohio. And I think that for all our community here that's listening, get involved. Don't get involved for the next election. That's two years away. Get involved in your local politics. Go online, look at the city, look at what, what com committees you can join on. Planning boards, development boards, zoning boards. The next time a great uh, Greek Orthodox Arab uh, uh, church that wants to be built with a beautiful basilica and a large cross, that you gotta be on that zoning board to make sure no one objects because you have a right to worship wherever you want, however you want. But the way to do that is by being on these boards. Everybody here in America can be part of the process. You may not be famous, but believe me, it's the unsung heroes. Maybe nobody here has heard of John Akuri, who is a great uh, Arab American here in Michigan. He happens to be Lebanese. He happens to be Maronite. But I will tell you, man, no one has worked harder from as far as I can remember from the late 80s, pushing the Arab American community forward to be successful. You may have never heard of him, but believe me, today, in our world politics today, he's a big shoulder that we stand on. Dr. Abdel Majid Katranji, thank you very much for participating in our show. Uh, I also uh, like to extend our thanks to Mr. Ray Hanania. And uh, we'll see you again. Uh, I will see you again 
the first Friday next month. Have a good weekend. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thanks, Ray. Great working with you. Great seeing you. You too. You too. Thanks, Altus. Take care, sir.